Hi, welcome to globalinvestorradio.com. Uh, this is the second part of Tape Reading and Market Tactics by Humphrey B. Neal, first published in 1931. And I'll just be reading a couple of excerpts from the first chapter entitled Stock Speculation. That's the cover of the book. And this is one of uh, Humphrey B. Neal's uh, Neal's quotes. The crowd is always wrong when it is important to be right. The stock market is a great cauldron of the hopes, desires and despairs of speculators or traders. If it were not for the speculators, there would be no active stock market. If it were not for the speculators, America would not stand where she does as the leading industrial country in the world. We may deplore speculation, but if it were not for this outpouring of money for stocks, you and I would not enjoy a fraction of the comforts and luxuries which we accept as necessities. The speculators carry the ball until the goal is reached. That is to say, speculators keep stocks afloat until they sink into the strong boxes of investors. We all know that there is a constant battle being waged between the professionals of Group 3 and the amateurs of Group 2, otherwise known as the public. The public is the customer to whom the professional trader or the financial manufacturer hopes to sell his product. As competition is the life of commerce, so it is the life of speculation. The speculatively minded public hopes to make money by trading in stocks in a hit or miss manner while the professional strives for his profits through engineering his manoeuvres so scientifically that the public will take from him property which he has acquired at lower prices. Unless we, who make up the public, have a thorough knowledge of why the professional exists and how he operates, we cannot hope to win in our engagements with him. First, let us look into Group 3 more closely and break it down in order to differentiate between the various types. The investment banker or any banking organization that underwrites or purchases stocks or bonds from one who needs capital is the manufacturer and distributor. As we have seen, he is the same as a cloak and suit manufacturer in that he must sell the goods he has fabricated before he can make his profit. The stock and bond manufacturer may employ from time to time other distributors, high pressure sales managers, pool operators, and may, and may appoint any number of agents to sell for him throughout the world. He often receives aid from stockbrokers also, and from the lesions of salesmen, customers men that they have. The pool operators accumulate stocks when in their judgment they are cheap, with the exception of selling them to us, the public, later at higher prices. Besides these members of the professional speculative element, there are many important individual traders who buy and sell for their own account, depending upon their own wits, skill and judgment to make money out of their buying and selling operations. To say nothing of the many other persons performing functions not immediately pertinent to our study. The ramifications of the manufacturing and distributive system for stocks and bonds are probably more intricate than those of any other commercial pursuit. The professional may be called in as a specialist in any number of situations. A manufacturer of bathroom fixtures may wish to raise capital with which to build a new plant, but before issuing more stock, he calls upon the financial manufacturer This specialist may advise him that before he actually issues the new stock, it would be wise to arrange for a more active market in his present stock, for then he can sell his new stock at higher prices. Therefore, the plans are worked out similarly to the plans which would be carried out if manufacturers were planning to market a new line of his own merchandise, bathroom fixtures. The professional may be called in by a group of large stockholders of a given corporation wish to sell their stock, but who realise that they cannot all offer their holdings for sale simultaneously without breaking the price of the stock. The professional will undertake to sell their stock for them to the public, and his agreement with the stockholders will be to obtain a given average price. A number of professionals may bank together from former pool for the purpose of acquiring a quantity of stock 
which they think may be marketed to the public at a higher price. One company may wish to gain control of another company through open market acquisitions of the stock. It may need, for example, only 50,000 shares to gain a working control. A professional may be called in to act as the purchasing agent. In this instance, his tactics will be reversed. It will be his job to buy cheaply rather than to sell dearly. His tactics will be to, to depress the stock in price in order to persuade the public to sell. There are any number of examples which I might be able to give to demonstrate the reasons for the experience, uh, sorry, for the existence of the professional. The thought to bear in mind is that the business of the financial community is to sell stocks to the public. There is a purpose behind every operation by a professional. It may be simply an individual campaign for personal profit, profit or it may well be a well-conceived plan for the raising of capital for industry. As soon as we appreciate that the professional element looks upon us as customers rather than as partners, we shall begin to perceive the task we face in attempting to make money by trading in stocks, or, incidentally, even by investing in stocks. Okay, over the next couple of weeks I'll upload some more Humphrey B. Neal Take Reading and Market Tactic excerpts. Again, check out the Oak Trader Report every Sunday before 11 p.m. Hong Kong time, and we cover the methods and trading techniques of investors like Humphrey B. Neal. Okay, thanks for listening. Uh, over and out, and I'll speak to everyone soon. Take care. Bye for now.